With Netflix's The Witcher becoming quickly one of the biggest new shows of 2020, old and new fans alike are flocking to play through the most recent installment of Geralt of Riviera's journey, The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. Wild Hunt was a fantastic game when it was released five years ago, and thanks to the hardworking community over at Nexus Mods has remained as enjoyable to play now as it was when released. Just a reminder that all modding for The Witcher is done through Nexus Mod Manager. You'll need to install the program Vortex via their website, which I will include a link for in the description. These mods should be all compatible with patch 1.32, however some people have been having problems with mods since that update was released. There is an active and dedicated community on Nexus Mods that is always willing to help players sort out any specific issues they are having as mod problems change drastically from player to player. So today we're going to explore 10 essential and some non-essential but pretty dang fun mods to install and reinvigorate your Witcher 3 playthrough experience. Welcome back to Gaming Focus, this is Phoenix signing in for another gaming video. If you're new here and love everything gaming related, you should consider hitting that subscribe button so you don't miss any of our new videos. To kick off this list is the Script Merger. The Script Merger mod is possibly the most essential mod in order to ensure your Witcher modding days go smoothly. While there are many powerful and wonderful mods to use to enhance your gaming experience, there is the possibility that some will not get along with each other. Script Merger is a mod that regulates mods. That is, it will search for any compatibility issues between the mods you wish to install and try to solve them for you. The mod also enables a larger number of mods to be utilized at any given time during gameplay, whereas usually there is a limit for active mods. If that doesn't work, then it'll be brought to your attention exactly which mods you have installed are clashing with each other. This is essential, as downloading and re-downloading mods to figure out which ones are breaking your game is one of the worst ways to spend a Sunday afternoon. I'm placing this one first in the hopes that you download it first and save yourself the headache of rummaging through the hundred mods you will end up downloading, trying to figure out which ones conflict with each other. All links are going to be in the description. Next we have Toss a Coin to Your Witcher. As so many of us are revisiting this amazing game thanks to the commercial success of Netflix's The Witcher, I felt I had no choice but to start with one of the most popular new mods going around right now. This mod adds the Toss a Coin to Your Witcher song from the show into several aspects of the game. You will hear it in your menus, credits, and being performed by street musicians. While right now the song kind of stands out from the rest of the atmosphere of the game, since it is a direct port of the music released by the show, a version is currently being worked on to make it fit more appropriately into the world of a game. For any fans of the show, this is a must-have mod to combine the two worlds, so keep an eye on the updates being done that are making it sound like a true part of the culture on the continent. Side question, which is your favorite Witcher mod? Have we missed one? Let us know in the comments below. Next we have The Witcher 3 HD Reworked Project. If you are a graphics fiend, one who desires even the subtlest of details to be intricately and breathtakingly rendered, then there is no better mod to install than The Witcher 3 HD Reworked Project. This mod extensively upgrades the visuals of virtually all aspects of the game. Importantly, the creators were very careful to make sure their work did not alter the original art style of The Witcher series. This leaves you with breathtaking HD textures on all things from rock walls to NPCs, all the while maintaining the brilliant aesthetic that The Witcher series has maintained through the years. The mod was designed to be as easy on your gaming system as possible, but it will impact game performance if you're running it on anything with less than 3GB of VRAM. You can download the mod in the link in the description. Next mod is Increased Draw Distance. Now that you have increased the overall graphics quality of the entire game, the next logical step is to make it so that there are more pretty things to look at, right? This mod greatly increases the render distance for the game. This creates a fuller and more rewarding visual experience in the game. Not to mention it greatly increases immersion when all you can see in every direction around Geralt is the beautiful world of The Witcher. Please keep in mind that draw distance can have a drastic effect on PC performance. This mod comes with many customizable categories, so be sure to tweak it and optimize performance on your own rig. Now let's check out Super Turbo Lighting! This mod redoes the lighting in the game to be more like it was in the original trailers and design, before the game got a visual downgrade to improved performance. Lighting is a personal preference, so the mod may be right for some and wrong for others. For me, the change is a very welcoming one. The lighting overall makes a dramatic difference to the visuals of the game, while of course not changing or adding anything to the game at all. The mod unfortunately does not work with any other weather or lighting mods, so make sure this is the only one you're installing to use, or delete it in order to use one that is more preferable to your visual taste buds. A brutal mod is up next, Ultra Gore 2, a dismemberment mod. Ah, uh, dismemberment. One of my favorite video games of the PlayStation 2 days in my youth was Shadow of Rome. 
This mod in The Witcher 3 allows Geralt 100% dismemberment on enemies in the game that are designed to be sliced into pieces. This mod will not allow you to dismember everybody, just the creatures in the game that the devs designed to have that done to them. The mod's focus is on making it so that 100% of the time you get the fun of seeing your sword cut clean through your enemy and then watching them fall into two pieces before your very eyes. The mod also bypasses the game requirement that you have a dismemberment trophy on Geralt in order to enjoy all of this fun. The mod also works particularly well with the next one on the list. And that next mod is Permanent Corpses. The mod does exactly what it sounds like. For me, this is immersion in a very thoughtful way. You can now relive some of your favorite combat memories when you walk through an area in the game that you haven't seen in hours and see the bodies of your foolish foes all on the ground. It really adds a feeling of progression and change, like you're impacting the world as you travel through it. I'm a big fan of seeing the actions I take in a video game leave impression on the game's actual world. While having the corpses of your enemies remain where they have fallen may not seem like the biggest change, it greatly increases your immersion in the game through a visual reminder of what you've done, who you've killed, and why you have even gone to a region in the first place. You can also set the corpse value low so that as you kill your way through the game, only the more recent enemies you killed shall remain, which is also more realistic. Bodies don't last forever. This is a fairly new mod, and unfortunately, it hasn't been working for some players. I recommend trying it and deleting it if you don't like the results, but hopefully a more stable version will be released soon. Next up, we have Fast Travel From Anywhere. This mod saves you the headache of trudging from signpost to signpost by allowing you to fast travel to a signpost from anywhere in the game. The most important aspect of this mod, though, is that it does not remove exploration from the game. The mod developers cleverly did this by limiting fast travel from going both ways, so that while you can fast travel to a signpost from anywhere, you are only able to go to signposts. This means you cannot simply teleport immediately to your next objective. I am proudly the type of player who made a point of walking up and down every inch of Skyrim when it came out, and I apply the same strategy to any game, such as The Witcher 3, which is so well designed that you would be a fool not to explore every inch of its map. So for me, this mod is the best of both worlds, allowing you all the joy of heading to your new destination, with none of the tedium of walking the exact same path back to the nearest travel point. I'm looking at you, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. The developer of the mod makes a specific warning not to fast travel while you have a mission active, as this can corrupt your file. Doing this can break the game instead of saving yourself time by fast traveling, and you'll have to start over. You have been warned. Next, we look at Auto Loot Configurable All in One. No loot heavy game can be said to have been modded until someone's made an auto loot feature. Look, if you like playing games like The Witcher, then, like me, you are used to spending vast amounts of time investigating every nook and cranny of the world, so you don't miss that valuable 189th ingredient for something you will never make or use. But it doesn't matter, because I must have all the loot. It is the loot that I want, not the loot's function. Auto loot does exactly what it sounds like, with the added feature of being highly customizable. This mod allows you to preset which items will be auto looted so that you don't have an inventory full of useless things. This particular download is the one you want, as two previous auto-loot mods have been combined, reworked, and enhanced with permissions from the original creators. This is ideal for replays, when you've already learned exactly what you want and have seen the nooks and crannies of most of the map. A great quality of life mod, to say the least. And real quick, just before we finish this video, I wanted to say thanks for watching and I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, why not subscribe to the channel? Now, for the last mod. Debug Console Enabler V1.32 a mod is the cheater in all of us, and it is pure fun. The debug console is what allows you to alter the game while playing, essentially your cheat code mod. With the console, you can spawn any item, horses, and boats, refill your health, increase your damage. When card games be permanently drunk, the list goes on. All you need to do is search up a list of the Witcher 3 console commands, and you are set to play God to your Witcher and become the true master of the continent. Now, keep in mind that there are over 3,000 mods for the Witcher on Nexus, and new ones are still being added quite consistently. So while this list is great at getting you started, it is by no means exhaustive. The game can be greatly catered to your own particular tastes. Getting all your mods working right and consistently can take a while, but don't lose hope as it can never be a bad thing to want to make your gaming experience as enjoyable as possible. We spend a lot of time in our video games, and I think the hardworking modding community deserves a round of applause for enabling us to consistently improve and tweak our gaming experiences. So with that, we wrap up the video. I hope you found it useful and enjoyed watching it. Check out the other videos from us on the screen at the moment. But until next time, this is Phoenix signing out of another gaming video. Take care, and as always, gamers, game hard.